That doesn't sound good. A report from the UN Scientific Panel on Climate Change urged governments around the world to take immediate action to avoid disastrous levels of temperature rise. According to the New York Times, the authors of the report found that if greenhouse gas emissions continue at the current rate, the temperature of Earth's atmosphere would increase about 1.5 degrees Celsius by 2040. Previously, scientists believed the damage would occur if average temperatures were to rise above 2 degrees Celsius. However, the reports warned the increase of just 1.5 degrees Celsius would flood coastlines as well as intensify droughts around the planet. In order to prevent 1.5 degrees of warming, pollution caused by greenhouse gases would have to be slashed by 45% by 2030 and 100% by 2050. By 2050, use of different sources of renewable energy such as wind and solar power would have to increase to 67%, while use of coal would have to decrease by nearly 40%. Drew Schindel, author of the report, said there is no way to mitigate climate change without getting rid of coal. The report warned of irreversible damage such as coral reefs dying off if we fail to take action to prevent this catastrophe. Stay tuned for more stories related to climate change. Another catastrophe caused by climate change. Japan's coral reefs are in danger. According to a government study, Rising sea temperatures have impacted the ability of Japan's biggest coral reef to recover from bleaching, resulting in only 1% of the reef being in good health. Due to rising sea temperature, the reef has suffered bleaching events in 1998, 2001, 2007, and 2016, leading to a decrease in the overall coral volume by nearly 80% in the Tsukise Lagoon. A Japanese ministry official said that the loss of rich animal life under the sea would have a grave impact on the ecosystem in the region. The lagoon is approximately 67.89 square kilometers, with only around 1.4% of its corals healthy. According to scientists, it takes at least 10 to 20 years for coral to recover from a bleaching event. Coral reefs are home to 25% of sea life, even though they only make up 1% of marine environment. The only way for the coral to recover is if sea temperatures drop and algae are able to recolonize them again. Florida's coastline threatened by toxic algae. According to a report from Tampa Bay Times, Florida's coastline is being threatened by toxic algal bloom and it seems to be getting worse every year. CNBC reports an algal bloom is a rapid increase of the population of algae in a relatively short period of time and can take place on freshwater or marine water systems. Algal bloom is caused by the overabundance of nutrients, nitrogen and phosphorus. These nutrients typically come from rainfall and wastewater outflows. The nutrients combined with the temperatures of the sea, sunlight and water movement can work to trigger an algal bloom. According to the EPA, the toxic blooms hurt marine life by blocking out sunlight, as well as creating toxins that hurt small fish and shellfish after they consume it. Not only do the algae hurt the environment, they also end up creating dead zones in the water where aquatic life can no longer survive because of the lack of oxygen, forcing marine life to either leave the area or die. Tampa Bay Times reports environmentalists are urging the state government to do more to address its polluted water. Snow in the Sahara? Sounds like climate change. The head of Russia's environmental monitoring agency says increasingly frequent snowfalls on one of the hottest places on Earth stems from global warming. On January 7th, a blanket of snow fell on the Sahara Desert, near the northern Algerian town of Ain Sefra. The Sahara has been known to get as hot as 122 degrees Fahrenheit during the day, but while temperatures drop at night, it's unusual to see snow due to the dry air. In 1979, snow fell in the area for 30 minutes. It was 37 years before the next snowfall, but only a year passed between then and the most recent one, which saw 15 inches of snow cover. This along with a cold spell in the U.S., an unusually warm Russian winter, and rainfall and flooding in Western Europe, it's evidence that global warming is on the rise. With the state of the climate as dismal as it is and with no signs of improvement, guess there will be more extreme weather in our future. Yikes. Asia's glaciers are shrinking. With Asian glaciers facing a massive melt by the end of the century, millions of people are at risk of water shortages. And it's all thanks to global warming. The high mountains of Asia lie in a region surrounding the Tibetan Plateau and contains the largest store of permanent ice outside the North and South Poles. Meltwater feeds into major rivers like the Indus, Yangtze, and Mekong, 
and are used for drinking, hydroelectric power, and irrigation. Scientists predict that Asian high mountain glaciers will lose a third of their mass by 2100 if the global temperature rises 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. If temperatures increase 3.5, 4, or 6 degrees, losses could reach 49, 51, and 65 percent respectively. Glacial loss could affect the region's water supply and lead to shortages. At the same time, accelerated melting could trigger intense flooding, especially when combined with climate change-induced heavy rains and super typhoons. High warming scenarios carry worse consequences, including massive sea level rise, floods, droughts, loss of species, and even disease. The only way to avoid such a dismal future is by minimizing global temperature rise. And for that, we need to double, even triple efforts to combat climate change. The hottest place on Earth. The U.S. Northeast may be experiencing record-breaking low temperatures, but in the land down under, Aussies are melting from the sweltering heat. Sydney became the hottest place on Earth on January 7th, with temperatures in the western suburb in Penrith reaching 47.3 degrees Celsius. It was a few degrees shy of breaking the record for hottest day in the area, a 47.8 degree temperature recorded in Richmond in 1939. The hot weather combined with strong winds increased bushfire occurrences, prompting certain areas to issue a total fire ban prohibiting open-air fires, welding, barbecues, and throwing lit cigarettes, among others. The heat caused higher than normal ozone levels, prompting a forecast of poor air quality, which could affect those with respiratory problems. Extreme temperatures also affected train track infrastructure and contributed to power outages, which affected roughly 3,000 properties throughout Sydney. The next few days are expected to be cooler compared to Sunday's scorcher, but still relatively hot.